I first started working in energy back in the early 1980s when I joined a group at the East West Center in uh, Honolulu that was focused on development in the Asia Pacific region. And at that time, the Asia Pacific region was among the fastest growing in the world and the prospects for the region seemed unlimited. Uh, and yet, it's a fairly energy poor area. Um, I had spent many years in China. I've worked in China for over 30 years. And at that time, my particular focus was on the prospects for China's growth. And this uh, particularly included uh, where were they going to get the energy to grow this enormous economy? And so from that, I, I, I delved quite deeply into uh, China's energy structure, oil production, coal, natural gas, trade in the region, and so forth. Um, it's a complex issue. Energy underlies all activities that human, uh, humans undertake. So without a fundamental understanding of energy, it's really uh, impossible to understand where, where what the future of humans are. Um, and I've been involved ever since. Um, for the last four or five years, I've been particularly focused in renewable energy. Uh, well, I would more precisely say alternative energies because I feel like the public dialogue about the potential and feasibility of moving away from oil, gas, or other fossil fuels to to other energy forms is uh, fairly misinformed in this country. And I wanted to bring uh, at least my scientific expertise to laying out what, what the limits and the feasibility from, from my point of view. What really changed my entire orientation about how I looked at energy and what I wanted to get out of my research in the energy field really came about as a result of the uh, reevaluation of uh, the uh, Shell oil company's reserves back in 2004. Um, you know, I had spent 15 years in the oil industry and I understand it very well, but since I had come to the lab in the mid-90s, I had been more focused on uh, the demand side and I would paid less attention to the supply side. And as soon as I read this about Shell downgrading their reserves, their uh, oil reserves by billions of barrels, I knew this was significant. And I decided I needed to look into this a little bit more deeply and just to see where the state of things were. And the, the deeper I looked, the worse it, 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 it was. Um, that got me uh, you know, heavily involved with uh, post-carbon peak oil groups in San Francisco. Um, I worked with the city government there to get the peak oil resolution passed. I authored the resolution that was passed. For, uh, it was the first one of a major city in the United States. Um, but I also learned a lesson from there that, that city government, state government, even federal government, at none of these levels are these issues truly grasped. Part of it's just illiteracy about energy. Um, Part of it is just the inertia of our political system. Um, and so it, it was through a combination of all these things that I, I decided I really need to become heavily involved, particularly at local and community level, about how are we going to respond to these energy challenges.